Occupational hearing loss is one of the most common work-related illnesses in the United States. Approximately 22 million U.S. workers are exposed to hazardous noise levels at work. An estimated $242 million is spent annually on workers' compensation for hearing loss disability. It's best when hazardous noise can be removed from the workplace whenever possible. Hearing protection is generally used in situations where dangerous noise exposures can't be controlled or eliminated. Noise is at dangerous levels if you have to raise your voice to speak to someone who is standing three feet away from you. Here we'll go over health effects of noise exposure, methods of hearing protection, correctly wearing hearing protection, and audiometric testing. Health effects of noise exposure. Exposure to high noise levels can cause permanent hearing loss. Neither surgery nor hearing aids can correct this hearing loss. Short-term exposure to loud noise can also cause a temporary change in hearing or a ringing in your ears called tinnitus. These short-term problems may go away within hours after leaving the noise. However, repeated exposures to loud noise can lead to permanent hearing loss. You hear me? What? I don't have my hearing aid on. What the hell do you want? Excessive exposure to noise is probably the most common cause of preventable hearing loss. Prolonged exposure to sound in excess of 85 decibels is potentially hazardous. After exposure to typical hazardous industrial noise, say in the low 90 decibels for an 8-hour workday, the ear fatigues and develops a temporary threshold shift. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Aha! Uh -huh. You're on my apartment building on Granite Avenue. You owe me 300 bucks. Get it up. Fred, take it easy. It's only a game. Wilma, I'm just like them big tycoons. I play to win. Now, Barney, pay up or get out of the game. It's all busted. That's one down and two to go. Betty, it's your turn. I don't have any more money either. You got it all. Then I'll take the mortgage and your open call. Well, come on. Take the bank, will you? Don't just sit there like a dummy. I will not have you talking that way to our guests. The process of hearing is complex and can be easily interrupted. There's a part of your inner ear called the cochlea. In the cochlea is the organ of corti. This organ contains hair cells which protrude from the surface and transmit sound vibrations to the brain through the auditory nerve. When you're overexposed to loud noise, these hair cells become overstimulated. Once the hair cells are overstimulated, they become paralyzed and stop responding to sound. After a period of quiet, the hair cells will recover. However, repeated exposure to noise over time will damage these hair cells and they lose their ability to recover. This results in permanent noise-induced hearing loss. The hair cells of the cochlea on the left are those of a person with normal hearing, and the ones on the right show the permanent damage overexposure to noise can cause. If we use an example of seagrass moving with the action of waves in the ocean, we can illustrate the impact of excessive noise on the cochlea hair cells. Initially, when large waves move over the seagrass, the grass bends with the waves, but recovers its position once the wave has passed. After repeated exposure to large waves, the attachment of the seagrass weakens and eventually the seagrass will break off. This is similar to what happens to the hair cells in your ears with repeated exposure to loud noise. Workers may notice the temporary hearing loss just mentioned with car radios. When they leave work, they turn the radio volume up, but by the next morning, the radio is too loud. When we develop a hearing protection plan, there are three approaches. Remove the noise, remove the worker, and if the first two aren't feasible, protect the worker. This is also known as the hierarchy of controls. When the only way to deal with occupational noise is to protect the worker, we're talking about using hearing protection such as earmuffs or earplugs. The purpose of hearing protection is to reduce the amount of noise entering the ear. Hearing protection is the last choice in protecting workers from occupational noise. Hearing protection generally provides greater protection from high frequency noise and less from low frequencies. To be effective, hearing protection must fit properly. There are advantages and disadvantages associated with the use of earmuffs or earplugs. Foam earplugs can be mass produced or individually molded to fit the ear. They can be reusable or disposable. On the positive side, they're simple to use, less expensive than earmuffs, and more comfortable in hot or damp work areas. 
On the negative side, they provide less protection than earmuffs and shouldn't be used in areas having noise levels over 105 decibels. They're not as visible as earmuffs and a supervisor can't easily check to see if workers are wearing them. They must also be properly inserted to provide adequate protection. Earmuffs vary with respect to the material, the depth of the dome, and the force of the headband. The deeper and heavier the dome, the greater the low frequency protection. The headband must fit tightly enough to maintain a proper seal, yet not be too tight for comfort. On the positive side, earmuffs can usually provide greater protection than plugs, although this isn't always true. They're easier to fit and generally more durable than plugs. On the negative side, they're more expensive and often less comfortable than plugs, especially in hot work areas. In areas where noise levels are very high, muffs and plugs can be worn together to give better protection. All hearing protectors have an assigned noise reduction rating, known as the NRR. This rating can be found on the packaging of all hearing protection devices. When selecting hearing protection, the first consideration is how much noise exposure is in your work area. If the noise is only moderate, you can probably get by with hearing protection that has a lower NRR. The choice of hearing protection is personal and depends on a number of factors in addition to the level of noise. Comfort and the suitability for both the worker and their environment need to be considered. Most importantly, the hearing protection should provide the desired noise reduction. It's best where hearing protection must be used to provide several different types to choose from. If the noise exposure is intermittent, earmuffs are more desirable since it may be inconvenient to remove and reinsert earplugs. NIOSH recommends that labeled NRRs be reduced as follows. For earmuffs, subtract 25% from the manufacturer's labeled NRR. For formable earplugs, subtract 50% from the manufacturer's labeled NRR. For all other earplugs, subtract 70% from the manufacturer's labeled NRR. One of the main factors driving this reduction is that people often use hearing protection incorrectly. Caring for your hearing protection is important. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions. Check hearing protection regularly for wear and tear. Replace ear cushions or plugs that are no longer pliable. Replace a unit when headbands are so stretched that they don't keep ear cushions snugly against the head. Earmuffs can be disassembled to clean. Wash earmuffs with a mild liquid detergent in warm water and then rinse in clear warm water. Ensure that sound attenuating material inside the ear cushions doesn't get wet. Putting in soft foam earplugs. To get the best protection from your soft foam earplugs, remember to roll, pull, and hold when putting them in. Use clean hands to keep from getting dirt and germs into your ears. Roll the earplugs into a small thin snake with your fingers. Pull the top of your ear up and back with your opposite hand to straighten out your ear canal. The rolled up earplug should slide right in. Hold the earplug in place with your finger as far as it will comfortably go. Count to 30 while waiting for the earplug to expand and fill the ear canal. Your voice will sound muffled when the earplugs have made a good seal. Check the fit when you're all done. The entire foam body of the earplug should be within the ear canal. Try cupping your hands lightly over your ears. If sounds are much more muffled with your hands in place, the earplugs may not be sealed properly. Take them out and try again. When using earmuffs, adjust the headband so that the ear cups stay comfortably positioned over your ears. The headband should be positioned over the crown of your head. Some earmuffs attach directly to a hard hat. There are also earmuffs that have a strap that's adjusted to keep the earplugs correctly positioned over your ears. If your hearing protection isn't comfortable for some reason, contact your safety manager to see about other options. Audiometric testing. An audiometric exam tests how well a person's hearing functions. The test covers both intensity and tone of sounds to determine how well a person can hear. It's used to diagnose hearing loss. Tones of different frequencies are presented. The goal is to find the softest sound level in which a person can hear the different tones. This determines a hearing threshold. A written hearing conservation program is required by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA, whenever employee exposures equal or exceed an 8-hour time-weighted average sound level of 85 decibels. Review We've covered the following. Health effects of noise exposure, methods of hearing protection, correctly wearing hearing protection, audiometric testing. 
Remember these two facts. Noise-induced hearing loss is 100% preventable. Noise-induced hearing loss is also 100% irreversible. Do your part to protect yourself against work-related hearing loss. Wear hearing protection if the noise in your work area is so loud that you have to raise your voice to talk to someone who is three feet away from you.